Hi, and welcome. This video will be the last and final update on my Guppy Cross number 6. I will sort through most of the male phenotypes from this brood, and there are a lot of them. This is also a brood that produced a lot of very beautiful males. I will also try to pick my next potential breeders for my next set of crosses. For those of you that are new to this channel, my name is Ivan. I created this channel to share and document my results breeding guppies. My first goal is to try and restore a line that breeds true for an all-white phenotype. I challenged myself to start with a single white male we named Gandalf and intentionally bred him to four different females that did not come from a line of white guppies. We are currently near the end of a series of back crosses and are beginning to see a small subset of each brood showing the all-white characteristic that Gandalf has. Crosses 1 and 6 will be the most relevant for this video. As a quick review, the C1A mothers to this brood are heterozygous for the gray-based body color, the sex-linked half-black trait, European Blau, Storzbach, and Magenta. The card in the corner will take you to a video where I discuss these genes in more detail. But the main takeaway is that we should expect a whopping 16 different phenotypes with these genes. That being said, the next portion of this video will be pretty data heavy as we take a detailed look at the resulting phenotypes from this brood with some statistics. So, if you want to jump ahead, follow the timestamp in the bottom right corner. All right, Cross 6 had a total brood size of 88, with 48 females and 40 males. Some of the juveniles I'm not sure of. They haven't differentiated yet to tell male or female. I focused on the females first and split them according to the easiest characteristic to identify, base body color. This group consisted of 21 gray-based females and 27 blonde-based females. This makes it a 44 to 56% split between the two phenotypes. Next, I further separated out the guppies that expressed the half-black trait from those that didn't. Among the 21 gray females, eight had the half-black characteristic. This left 13 gray females without the half-black characteristic. Among the 27 blonde females, 10 had the half-black characteristic. 17 blonde females ended up without the half-black characteristic. So out of 48 total females, 38% had the half-black compared to 62 that didn't. This is skewed much heavier towards not expressing the half-black characteristic, but this value actually evens out when the males are also counted. Given this, I'll just give the total number of individuals per phenotype and go through the percentages at the end. This next part will get a little confusing because so far we have four groups of females that can also each split between those that have some red pigment and those that don't. The red pigment is what I use to identify if a guppy is not expressing European Blau. This gave me eight different groups of females. The half black gray group had three red females and five non-red females. The non-half-black gray group had one red female and 12 non-red females. The half-black blonde group had six red females and four non-red females. The non-half-black blonde group had seven red females and 10 non-red females. So a total of 17 red pigmented females to 31 European Blau expressing females. These eight groups can technically split further to females with and without Storzbach expression. But I had a very hard time identifying this, so I didn't bother with the females. These 10 non-red females are the ones that I am the most interested in because they are the ones most likely to produce the all-white phenotype I'm after if paired with an all-white male. I went ahead and picked the four that had the most potential for Storzbach expression and saved them in their own individual tank. I plan on using them to cross with one of the males that I saved from cross five. Okay, I did the same thing with the males, but attempted to split between Storzbach expressions. 
The males in this brood are quite stunning really. If I had three times as many tanks as I do now, I would have considered working with one of the half black white phenotypes here. But well, I don't. So I'll be letting the majority of this brood go. If you're interested, DM me on Instagram or send me an email. So again, I separated the gray based and blonde based males first. This group divided into 24 gray based males and 16 blonde based males. Rather than further separating the males by the half black characteristic as I did with the females, I decided to instead separate them by whether or not they had any red pigmentation. Of the 24 gray males, 15 had some red pigmentation. Nine of the gray males did not. Of the 16 blonde males, eight had some red pigmentation. The other eight blonde males did not. So far, the males are in four different groups. I went ahead and separated by half black expression next, which doubled the different phenotypes from four to eight. The gray and red group of males had 12 half black expressing males and three non-half black. The gray without any red group of males had eight half black expressing males and one non-half black. The blonde and red group of males had three half black expressing males and five non-half black. The blonde without any red group of males had three half black expressing males and five non-half black. It is interesting that these guppies look more blue than black and likely because of the blonde base and European acting together to really reduce that melanin. Okay, this brought the total number of phenotypes to eight, but there is still Storzbach to consider. This is the hardest characteristic for me to identify. There are some guppies where it is obvious that they are strongly metallic, but other times it's unclear. I ended up relying on the iridescence on the backs of the males. This isn't strictly accurate. There are other genes that could contribute to iridescence on the top sides of guppies, but this is the best I got to go on. In any case, having this characteristic doesn't hurt when selecting for guppies that have the all white phenotype. This is the last characteristic that I'll separate the guppies by, and we will have 16 phenotypes by the end. The half black, red, and gray group of males had 12 Storzbach expressing males to seven non-expressing males. This non-expressing group is actually the closest in resemblance to their gray half black red uncles. The non half black red and gray group of males had two Storzbach expressing males to maybe one non-expressing male. I put that one maybe male in with the other two for now. The half black non red and gray group of males had one Storzbach expressing male to seven non expressing males. These males are actually my favorite out of this group. All of them look rather metallic, but only one had strong topside iridescence. I kept this single male and I put him into my bigger mixed guppy community tank. The non half black, non red, and gray group of males had one Storzbach expressing male to no non expressing males. It's interesting that there are no non expressing males here, but not surprising. This could be my failure at identifying Storzbach accurately, or we just don't have enough numbers in this brood to fill out all the possible phenotypes. The half black, red, and blonde group of males had one Storzbach expressing male to two non expressing males. Again, hard to tell the difference from just a side profile. The non half black, red, and blonde group of males had three Storzbach expressing males and two non expressing males. These metallic males look just like their half brothers in Cross 5, where they seem almost pink. The half black, non red, and blonde group had one Storzbach expressing male to two non expressing males. The non half black, non red, and blonde group had three Storzbach expressing males to two non expressing males. This group is the closest to the all white phenotype that I'm after. 
One of these males looks similar to Gandalf and the selected white males from Cross 5. Alright, that should be all of them. I laid them all out in this grid pattern to hopefully simplify our total numbers, but also show how complicated phenotypes become when there are several genes involved. There are two spaces in this grid that are empty. The top right is just a placeholder. The guppy that should be in this space is in the adjacent box because this juvenile is, well, a maybe. The next empty space is on the bottom right, which is where we are missing guppies that express that particular phenotype. Hopefully, with specific selection for my subsequent crosses, the complexity will reduce significantly and we won't have 16 different phenotypes. This is because our upcoming crosses should lock in some of the recessive genes. So, as promised, let's go through the percentages for each gene expression by including both the males and the females. I'll only visually show the stacked males here when highlighting the specific gene. We predicted that each characteristic should have a 50% split in our previous video. Let's see how close we actually got. The first characteristic is base body color. This brood had 45 gray bodied to 43 blonde bodied guppies. An almost even split with 51% gray and 49% blonde. The next characteristic we will quantify is European blau. Again, if a guppy has any red pigmentation, I am identifying this as a guppy that does not express European blau. This brood had 40 red and 48 non-red guppies, a split of 45% red to 55% non-red. Nice. This is still pretty close to down the middle. The next characteristic is half-black. This brood had 44 half-black to 44 non-half-black guppies, a straight down the middle split. We can't get a better matchup to our predictions than that. The last gene is Storzbach. If you recall, I did not split the females into these respective groups because I could not identify them. So these next numbers will reflect just the males. I counted 17 Storzbach to 23 non-Storzbach expressing males. This works out to 43% Storzbach to 57% non-Storzbach. Still pretty close to an even distribution, but skewed more to the non-expressing side. This makes sense because my selection was based on the iridescence of the male's top side which is not strictly accurate. I should expect that less males will actually fit into this criteria. Look at that. So overall, our distributions are pretty even across all these genes, just as we predicted. I'm pretty happy with this outcome, and this makes me a little more confident that I'm understanding these genes. Let's take a look at the guppies that have the characteristic that makes them appear the closest to the all-white phenotype. This is a total of 7 guppies out of 88 and close to 8% of the brood. A little more than the expected 1 out of 16 or 6.25% of the brood. So I will be keeping these 4 females to continue my project. I plan on crossing them to one of the males I picked out of cross 5. The males here are indeed a vibrant white with maybe one of them closely resembling the cross 5 males. Their tails are less solid than I'd like, so I do not plan on using them to continue with my project. The best looking male here will go into my big mixed guppy tank. I'm keeping that tank as a colony breeding side project. I regularly pick out developing males and only return them if they have strong expression of the genes I want, namely Storzbach and European Blau. I have kept a male that was gray based and also threw in the half black expressing male from this cross. I'm excited to see what comes of it. As for the rest of these guppies, I will be selling them to make room because I have no space right now. If you are interested, please shoot me an email or DM me on Instagram. I enjoyed this cross a lot. Hopefully it will be a while before we have 16 different phenotypes. But this complexity did bring up some really neat looking males. If you are interested in following along in this journey, subscribe and stick around. Even though this is the last update on cross 6, I have a couple more crosses to go over and cross 8 will be the focus of the next video. These guppies are very close to maturing to their full color and by the next video will hopefully be even more vibrant. 
Here are a few update clips of my other crosses. Against all odds, Cross 9 actually dropped Fry. Gandalf is still viable. However, the Fry were largely weak, and at this point only a handful survived and are hiding in the algae. This means that the female from Cross 5 we placed in with Gandalf should also produce Fry, and this will be Cross 10. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.